olfactory sensations although that has been taught to you with the olfactory nerve. This area here you see inforomedial portion of the parahippocampal anterior of the parahippocampal gyrus that is called rhinencephalon. It includes the you know pyriform area and the hippocampal formation and the primary secondary areas you know primary area is basically the peri pyriform area and the peri amygdaloid area and the anterior portion of uncus and uncus mainly the posterior portion of maximum portion of uncus is a part of secondary olfactory area and that's called entorhinal area all of this is called allocortex like also called rhinencephalon and it is a primitive cortex, it has only three layers. So, this is about the sense of olfaction. Now, the olfactory cortical areas, you can see is this olfactory tract, this is the medial and lateral olfactory stri, this is an in intermediate olfactory stri which reaches into olfactory tubercle. Now, what about this lateral olfactory stri area, you can see it reaches to the gyrus semilunaris, this is called gyrus semilunaris, okay, and this is the anterior perforated substance. Now, look here. This, as I told you, is uncus. Uncus ke further subparts. What are the subparts of uncus? Is actually uncinate gyrus. Then you have tail of dentate gyrus and intralimbic gyrus. So these are the three gyrus. They form the uncinate lobe, the secondary olfactory area. Then uh, part of these and primary olfactory area as you can see is the gyrus ambience here right this gyrus ambience and this is the medial one right so you have the diagonal band of Broca's this surrounds the meat this forms the medial boundary of anterior perforated substance so I told you that this one is parahippocampal gyrus so anterior portion of parahippocampal gyrus Okay, so we are talking about olfactory cortex and that is made up of primary and secondary olfactory areas, right. So primary olfactory cortex, I have been telling you that remember that these three words anterior perforated substance and the pre amygdaloid area surrounding to this is pre amygdaloid area and the pre pyriform area, pre pyriform area together these are small, small little gray nuclei embedded around to this anterior perforated substance that form the and you know primary olfactory cortex and that is classified according to Broadman's is as area number uh, 34 and even 28 also is included in this so that's the primary olfactory area so from here you can see these are the association fibers so you can see the tertiary neurons from primary to the secondary that is uncus got it okay so now about the broadman's area look here in humans broadman's area number 28 and broadman's area number 34 together constitute approximately the entorhinal cortex basically some authors might have given you will become confused right because some authors say it's 28 some have written it 34 so let me tell you that it will be a better way to understand that entorhinal area as i told you that entorhinal area was including uncus plus the anterior portion of the parahippocampal gyrus so this area is entorhinal area and this area includes the ventral area 28 is ventral entro entorhinal area right and area 34 is the dorsal entorhinal cortex on the parahippocampal gyrus. So just remember that in case if they ask like olfactory cortex what a broad man's area it is. So on the ventral aspect of the parahippocampal gyrus it is 28 and on the dorsal portion of the entorhinal cortex it is area number 34. So, 28 and 34 together form the uh, olfactory cortex. Now, in case if sometime they ask you, 
like in an MCQ form, giving the four choices, which is the you know secondary olfactory area, or then twenty eight and thirty four are separate choices, right? In that case, I would suggest that thirty four will be a better option, area number thirty four, because twenty eight is a sub part of area thirty four. Okay, so that was about the broadman's area of olfactory cortex.